Hey guys, welcome back. Have you ever seen an AI agent go from cluelessly stumbling around to mastering its environment? Making the best moves every single time? In today's video, we'll train an agent to do just that. Transforming random chaotic actions into smooth, optimal choices. And here's the twist. By the end, I'll show you how one small change to the environment can completely flip the agent's behavior. Stay tuned. This transformation is something you don't want to miss. We will also be diving into why Q learning has its limits, especially in complex environments, and how deep Q learning can solve these issues. Today, we are building on Q learning concepts from our last video. If you need a refresher, check the link up here. You can also follow along with the Colab notebook in the description. Let's start with a basic environment. Frozen lake with is slippery set to false. Here our agent's actions are fully predictable. Move right and it actually goes right. This will be our baseline to see how a predictable setup helps the agent learn effectively. First, we'll initialize the environment and set up render mode as RGB array for a replay friendly format. Now let's get into our helper functions. The first function manages action selection based on epsilon, which in turn controls randomness. High epsilon means the agent mostly explores with random moves. Low epsilon means it sticks to action with the highest Q value in each state. We'll also define a function for calculating the temporal difference error which is crucial for updating our Q values. Quick recap. The temporal difference error is the difference between the reward plus the discounted next state Q value and our current estimate for the Q value. Our function will take in parameters like the current state, the next state, the action, the reward, and our Q table. We use the formula you just saw to calculate TD error and TD target. To do so, based on the current state and action, get the former Q value estimate. We then use the reward and the discounted max value for the next state to calculate TD target and use this to get the TD error. Next, we'll set up our core training parameters, which is the number of epochs, the discount factor, the learning rate, and the epsilon decay rate. After each epoch, we'll decay epsilon to shift gradually from exploring to exploiting the learned Q values. Now we start the training loop. Each epoch begins with resetting the environment. When you reset the environment, Jim gives you back the initial state and the info. Also, whenever you take a step inside a Jim environment, it returns the next state, the immediate reward, whether the episode is done or not, a truncated information and the info. We'll only use the first three for our training, which is the next state value, the immediate reward, and whether the episode is done or not. During each step of an episode, the agent uses the Q table to learn from every success and failure, updating as it goes by. By the end, the epsilon should be close to zero, and our Q table should converge to near optimal values. Here's what the Q table looks like after training. And when we replay the agent's action, you will see that it always finds the shortest path to its goal, episode after episode. Now, here's the fascinating part. When we set is slippery to true, the agent's world becomes unpredictable. Training it using the same steps leads to very different decisions. Let's take a look at how it performs in this new setup as you can see, its actions are very different than when the is slippery was turned to false. Now, try playing around with the hyperparameters to see how the agent's behavior shifts on your own. Now, here's the key takeaway. To get these optimal Q values, we had to revisit each state multiple times. This works well when we have a limited manageable number of discrete states. But imagine scaling up, say, for an AI playing Mario, 
where each state is an image represented by a 3D array. This would make our Q table enormous and Q learning wouldn't be feasible because even if we wanted to, we won't be able to visit each state multiple times because of the large number of states being there. In fact, the number of states would be so large, it wouldn't fit even in our memory. So, to tackle environments with massive state spaces, we need a more advanced approach. Deep Q learning. In the next video, we'll dive into how Deep Q networks help solve this problem by approximating Q values without relying on an unmanageably large table. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.